Onward to chapter 8 now, which in many respects is basically the same thing as chapter 7, um, at least as far as the calculator stuff is concerned. So um, I'm going to scroll through here and find a problem. Do, 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 do. Ah, yeah, I'm going to find a story problem. How about here? Haha, ha, the GRE stuff again. Okay, so if you look at this, it says the combined GRE score has a mean of 1066, standard deviation of 191. You're going to look at n equals 15. For the first question, it says, what is the probability that a randomly selected student? Now, how many is that implying? This guy right here, the definite article, implies that there's only one. So it, that's a chapter 7 problem. Oops, let me make this smaller. So you do second distribution, number 2, normal CDF. And you type 900, 900, comma, 1200, comma, 1066, comma, 191, close parentheses, enter. All right. So the answer to this part right here is 0 0.5661. All right. Now, what about a sampling distribution? Okay, sampling distribution is going to have, because of the way the distributions work, since the original data was normal, let's see, normal, then it's going to still be normal even though n is only 15 here. Okay, so shape, it'd be normal because it was originally normal. Okay, therefore it's okay that n equals only 15. Center, which is the mean of the means. Um, let me do this. Mu x bar. Hold on, let me put that in there. Hey, come here. Mean of the means is going to be equal to what it was anyway, 1066. Okay, no trouble. But the spread, the spread is a whole other ball of wax. The spread, according to the central limit theorem, which is sigma sub x bar, is going to be sigma divided by, oops, sorry, hope you didn't hear that, <laughs> divided by the square root of n. Okay, sigma for us was 191. It's going to be divided by the square root of n, which was 15. So I would make my calculator tell me what this is over here. So sigma, which was 191, divided by second x squared. See right there in the little symbol, square root, 15, close parentheses, enter tells me that the stip spread would be 49, it's approximately, I mean, squiggly equals because it's not really exact, but 49.316. Close. There's the sampling distribution. Now, what is the probability now? It was 0 .5661 when it was talking about a single person. Second enter, second enter, gets the second entry up there. And instead of 191, I'm going to type 191 divided by the second square root of 15, which is my sample size. There we go. It's 0 .996 now. Okay, 9963. So it's it works the same way as chapter 7 did. I mean, you're still doing left, which is 900, to right, which is 1200. The mean is 1066. But what's happening in chapter 8 is the standard deviation is getting smaller. Because when you're looking at samples, that has smaller spread than when you're looking at individuals. Cool? All right, so that's how to do those probabilities. Um, I'm going to see you later for the next question. Actually, I can do this one right here. Um, this one, you can read through it. It would be a normal CDF question. Okay. It says, I'm going to do this part right here. Suppose you get a batch of 40 pennies, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to do normal CDF. It wants to know what's the chances the age is greater than. So I'm going to do 16 comma 1e99 comma the average age of pennies is 12.2 so 12.2 oopsie I typed it over there 12.2 comma then it's 9.9 .9 divided by the square root of my sample size which is 40 close parentheses close parentheses enter and this answer down here is 0 0.0076. Okay, so it's still a normal CDF. You still use the 1e99. It's just that the standard deviation changes now. In chapter 8, you got to divide by the square root of whatever n is. So you mean in 8.1, that's what you got to do. 8.2, I'll see you for next time.